Hi. Now, before we start the third part of the question, calculate the greatest height of P above the surface, this, remember, is the solution to part two, which I did in the previous video. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, do come back when you're done, and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is remove the forces that we've got on our diagram. We're not going to need these forces at all. We've also seen that in the previous part, as Q descended, just before it hit the surface, V was equal to 0.735 meters per second. So I'll just put that in and update the diagram now, that that's 0.735 meters per second. Now as Q falls to the ground, P is going to rise. And because the string is inextensible, it's going to have the same acceleration and it's going to move exactly the same distance as Q fell to the ground, a distance H. So let's just mark that in, that P goes up, say, to here, and this distance is going to be H. Okay, so just mark that in as H as well. Now when Q hits the ground with this speed of 0.735 meters per second, P is up here, it's traveled a distance h, and it is going upwards with the same speed, 0.735 meters per second. So let's just mark that in as 0.735, and we'll put the meters per second below, okay? 0.735 meters per second. But at this point now, the string becomes slack as Q has hit the ground. And so what's going to happen is there's no tension in the string at this section, okay? The particle is still going to travel up into the air, but it's now deaccelerating because you've got acceleration due to gravity acting downwards, G. Okay, which will take us 9.8 meters per second per second in the calculations. And it's just going to rise to another height. Okay, let's just say it rises to this height here. And at this point, it comes to instantaneous rest. So at that point, its speed is zero. Okay. Now, we're going to need to work out that height so that we can eventually work out the height that it is above the ground, which is going to be 2h plus this distance in here. I'll call that distance, say, x, okay? So I hope you can see that, okay? So first of all, what have I got to do? I've got to establish what h is. So to do that, I could consider Q, or I could consider P over this stretch here. It doesn't matter. I'll leave it to you to experiment. I'm going to work with Q. So let's just clear this working away from the previous part of the question. So we consider Q, and because I'm going to use a SUVAT-based equation, I've got to set up a positive sense downwards in the direction of motion for Q. If I was considering P, I would have upwards as positive. Okay, so let's just build those variables up. First of all, we've got S, the displacement, U, V, A, and T. So what have we got? We've got S, which is H, okay? U, the initial velocity, well, it started from rest here, so that would be zero. V, we know is 0 0.735, 0.735. We've got the acceleration, it's 2.45. 
and we have the time 0.3 so if I'm trying to find H I've got quite a few equations that I could use it's up to you which ones you use you could use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS you could use S equals UT plus a half AT squared you could use S equals VT minus a half AT squared but the one I'm going to use is S equals U plus V times T all divided by 2 so if I use this equation s is equal to h so therefore we've got h equals u is 0 plus v v is 0 0.735 0 0.735 and we multiply that with t which is 0 0.3 and divide the answer by 2 and what have we got well working this out it turns out to be 0 0.11025 and that will be measured in meters. Okay, so we've now got the distance fallen by Q, which is going to be exactly the same distance risen by P. But now the string becomes slack and it's going to continue upwards just for a short distance, a distance X, under the acceleration due to gravity. And it's going to come to instantaneous rest. So we can build up another SUVAT based equation on this one. So let's just come down here, okay, and we'll consider P's motion over this stretch here. So I just put up here a subtitle, and that is to consider P. And what I'm going to need to do is take a positive sense. I'm going to take positive as upwards, okay? Because that's the direction of initial motion. So we've got S, which is equal to X, okay? U, U was the initial speed at this point, which was 0 0.735, 0 0.735. We've got V. Remember, it came to instantaneous rest at this point here, so that's zero. And you've got the acceleration, which is the acceleration due to gravity, and it acts downwards in the negative sense here. So it's going to be minus 9.8, minus g, okay? So what equation would I use that connects these variables together? I've left t out, okay? I don't know the time it took over this interval. So the equation that I would use would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if I subtract u squared from both sides, and that will give me v squared minus u squared equals 2as, then if I then divide both sides by 2a, I would therefore get s equals v squared minus u squared, all divided by 2a. And it's just a question of substituting my values in. s is x, the distance upwards that p eventually goes before coming to rest. And that's going to equal v squared, or v is 0, so I'll leave that out. And then you've got minus u squared, so that's minus 0.735 squared. And it's all divided by 2 multiplied by a, a being minus 9.8. And if you work this out, you should find that you get 0 0.027. 5625 exactly okay and that'll be measured in meters so all we need to do now we've got everything we need to uh, work out the distance that p is at above the level here okay that's the greatest height that it would rise that would be 2h plus x so if we just write that in then okay that Therefore, we've got the maximum height, we'll just put max height, okay, of P equals, we've got 2 times H, 
that value there, 2 times 0 0.11025 plus this little extra height there, 0 0.027. 5625 and what you get is that this equals 0 0.248 to three significant figures 0 0.248 meters to 3 sf so quite a lengthy question when you get these kind of questions where they want you to find the maximum height that something rises to but they're generally much the same, they follow the same kind of routine and if you're able to uh, get this that's excellent, if not as I say I hope you've been able to follow it and uh, able to do this kind of method now.